Yes, some of those things could have happened, but there was nothing in the beginning to show you that, oh, that's why this happened. Hello guys and welcome to another episode of The Gist where we discuss African cinema and Nollywood movies in general. My name is Ade. And my name is Coyote. Today we have another exciting movie called 50. 50 captures a few pivotal days in the lives of four Nigerian women at the pinnacle of their careers. What positives can you take from this movie? I have quite a few positives for this film, which okay. is nice. It's nice to change, but sometimes Thank I just... God. Anyway. <laughs> I will say what the other films I have reviewed recently, but yeah, to start with, I love cinematography. I'm one of those that when I sit down to watch a film, I love a good picture. Yeah. Um, I know story is most important, but on this one, I have to start with picture. The picture quality was sumptuous. It was yeah. good, rich colors. There's something yeah. about um, sometimes um, cinematographers struggle to capture black skin very well. Mm. This cinematographer did not have that issue at all. There was no high contrast, very nice browns and orange yeah. and you know, shout out from to the skin. Malcolm McLean yeah the cinematographer yeah. Yeah. was it the same one I'm not sure if it's the same one that I'm not sure if it, it was the one that did half of the yellow yeah, sun yeah. But, because um, it was the same director and yeah. again that was another brilliant um, film with good cinematography so yeah, yeah love that storyline on the whole I'll come back to that later but on the whole was very good I love the premise and um, it reminded me of mm. um, Waiting to Exhale yeah. where um, I think was it three of those three women or maybe four four, 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 four. Yeah, four women as well um, just showing their their love life and the different things that happen in their in their um, relationships through love um, lives. Triangles. Yeah, triangles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all regards really triangles. But it was it was was well shot. I love the storyline. Performances again. Um, Irati Doyle. Love that lady's acting. She's really really Brilliant. great. Yeah. So generally on the whole, I there was a lot, quite a lot to to like about it. Oh, yeah. The lady that acted as her daughter as well. Yes. Oh god, really, really good. Yes, really good. her name is Fuzo Ozimka. You played Shadi. Yeah, Fantastic brilliant. acting. Yeah, brilliant. It's it's beautiful to see when sometimes you're going against somebody who everyone knows is a great actress and you're trying to hold your own and you did it so beautifully yeah. well. Yeah. We salute you. Yeah. Um with regards to positives for me, um, like you said, the acting was really good, really believable. I love Iriti Dog's acting where she could just switch from um, her English accent into um, a Nigerian accent into speaking Yoruba and back and forth. You know, yeah, it was, brilliant. it's the way I know people talk. It's not this over polished thing that you're like, what are you even saying? This? <laughs> exactly. You know, it, it was beautiful to watch and she really, she really made it um, watchable. Um, what else? What else was there? I love the fact that the ensemble cast that they brought together with Wally Ojo and all the different other people that were brought together. I don't think there was anybody that was below par. Yeah, this was one of the. You know, sometimes you're watching a film and you're like, did they run out of budget to get an actual actor? Because <laughs> really can't act. <laughs> you, know? you know, this one. I, I'm hard pressed. Even the extras were quite good. Yeah. Oh, but there was one person. There was one person I now remember. Okay. The oh. that boy. Oh. He, was, he was just okay. Was, yeah. not, not, so I would say he was average. <laughs> That's why I said there was nobody that was below he average. Was, <laughs> I mean, if this is average, he was hovering somewhere here. Well, you, you, could, you, could, you could look at it from the standpoint that he was playing one of those arrogant um, young boys who doesn't give a care about okay. life kind okay. of because, thing. Because so, I like the film, I would, I would <laughs> believe him. <but> uh. <laughs> And yeah, yeah I, would, I would push the matter, but yeah, it was generally generally good performance. Yeah, so I think it was generally. So, what did you not like? Okay, so I mentioned story when I was talking about things I liked, and I said I'll come back to something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this will have to be careful not to spoil it, because um, to really enjoy this film, you need to not know certain things that are going to happen. Yes. But when you, when you build a premise, so when you start watching a film, um, let me pick a film like um, uh, October 1. Oh. We've reviewed October 1 already. So in October 1, the film starts with some, it's a spate of murders and they bring an inspector. That is the premise. So you know it's going to be an investigation film mm -hmm. and you know at the end, mm. there will be either a reveal of the person or the person getting away, or yeah. reveal of the person getting caught or the person escaping. But they will reveal who did it, so yeah. roughly. With a romantic comedy or of comedies about love, there tends to be um, emotional stuff that happen. And when you get to the end, there has to be a reason why it ends a certain way. 
Now, this one ends a certain way and there's no logical reason for you. Yes, some of those things could have happened, but there was nothing in the beginning to show you that Oh, that's why this happened. Mm. So you, you normally you set up an ending. You set it up with prompting in the premise. This is this person. And then when you get to the end, you go, ah, okay. I can understand that's why X, Y, Z happened at the beginning. With this one, it just comes out of the blue completely. Like mm. a bomb, like boom. Yeah. And you're like, really? Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I think the, that, that was one of the negatives for me as well in the sense that the movie was going at a certain pace. Let's say it was going at like 60 miles per hour. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it just went to 120 miles per hour. You're like, whoa, wait, wait, how did you get there? Kind of a thing. So, yeah, I, it was rushed. I mean, we can't really get into it because we'd give it away. But yeah. if you want to get into it, nollywoodbeliever.com. Exactly. But um, another, ne another negative I would say is um, translation. Oh, uh, yeah. Do not use Google Translate for your <laughs> subtitles. It's not fair now. It's not fair. <laughs> Please. I, I think basically what, what, what we've been discussing before was the fact that, look, you need to translate from the point of the spirit of what you're trying to say as yeah. opposed to the verbatim translation yeah. in terms of English. Yeah. Uh, and I think, because I was trying to follow the subtitles and I... I, I after I was like, I'm Nigerian, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> at, no point, at no point following this, this yeah. leading you in a different direction. <laughs> yeah, the sad um, thing is, it's not just this film. I've noticed quite a number of um, Nollywood films where, especially when it has to do with Pidgin English, maybe not so mm -hmm. much Yoruba. Yoruba, maybe I've not seen many Igbo films or House films, but the Yoruba films, they still try to get it right. But with Pidgin English, they just never seem to understand yeah. how to interpret Pidgin English. So mm -hmm. maybe they do a translate, direct translation and it just comes off or then you can tell, no, that's not what that means, you know? Exactly. But anyway, yeah, this is, this is something I think they need to pay attention to. Well, verdict, in terms of verdict, I would say it is a must watch. I'm finding it difficult to call it a must watch. This is cheating now, see. <laughs> in my notes, I think I wrote that word, but let, I, I can see why it's a must ahead. watch. Um, the, the, okay, let me put it this way. There's a lot more going for it than there is going against it. So on that note, I will graduate my my, my initial we are not begging you Joel if you don't want to say must watch it's okay no no I can't okay it's one of those where you're, I'm, I'm, I'm always available about my scoring I don't like giving verdicts to films but I, I think I would upgrade it to a must watch okay <laughs> we accept okay I, I will tell I'll, I'll tell you why I feel that this is a must watch one is going out to support the people that are actually doing great cinema yeah and secondly, because this should be the minimum standard that any ni aspiring Nigerian filmmaker should be aiming for, as a minimum. The cinematography was beautiful. The story, while it had a bit of holes in it, but the story was wholesome, if you take it in its entirety. Um, and the acting was on par. So I, I think when you bring all those elements into it, I think we should be aiming that these are the kind of movies that yeah. we should be making. Yeah. And then, you know, they, they, once the movie was released, there was a lot of press kits. There was... I could go on, but without yeah, the, the going... the whole package. Was, exactly. Was it was a whole package. Thank you for watching this episode of The Gist. Please head on over to nollywoodboulevard.com where we can discuss more about this movie. Let us know what you thought and um, head on over to Facebook. Tell us what you thought on there as well. Subscribe, like, YouTube, Twitter. You know how to do it. Yep. Thank you. And we'll see you next time on Yes. My name is Ali. And my name is Coyote. Today's movie is none other than 50. 50 is captures a, a pivotal, a few pivotal, uh, da, 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 da. Ah!